Hi everyone, welcome to our new video on SSRSRP measurement in 5G NR. In this video, we will try to understand the SSRSRP measurement which are done by the UE in 5G and used for the various procedures. So let's get started. The RSRP is Reference Signal Received Power. RSRP measurements is done by the UE. In 5G, UE does the measurement of SSRSRP for the cell selection, cell reselection, power control, mobility, and beam management procedures. The RSRP measurements are generated and reported at two layers in 5G and these two layers includes our layer 1 which is physical layer and layer 3 which is RRC. For an example, you can measure the SSRSRP at layer 1 when it is sending the CSI reports. The CSI reports includes the CQI measurements, your RI measurements and other measurements which are related to the layer 1. And base station can provide the SSRSRP measurement results at layer 3 when it is sending the measurements reports. And these measurements reports can be used for the mobility procedures like handover and the beam mobility. In 5G, UE is allowed to measure the PBCH DMRS to generate the SSRSRP results. Here, the DMRS and the SS signals are transmitted with equal power so that they can be averaged directly. When UE is measuring the SSRSRP for layer 1 reporting, then UE can be configured to use CSIRS. CSIRS are basically channel state information reference signals and can use the additional inputs in terms of offset. If CSIRS have different transmit power compared to SS signals, and the PBCS DMRS signal, then E node B or the GNB in 5G can provide the offset information to the UE so that can be taken into account for the measurement procedures. In this slide, we have captured some of the key pointer for SSRSRP. So SSRSRP is in average of power received from a single resource element allocated to the SS signal. And this averaging is done by calculating the linear power in milliwatts instead of doing average in dBm. This power is measured on the energy received during the useful part of symbols and it does not include the cyclic prefix which is an overhead of symbol. For FR1 which are low frequencies the measurements is performed at the UE connector and this is done by assuming that UE has a single antenna per receive path instead of an antenna array. For FR2 which has higher frequencies or we can say millimeter waves, this measurement is performed based upon the combined signal strength received on the all antenna ports. And here this assumption is that UE has an array of antenna on each receive path. 
this measurement are done and filtered at two layers as we discussed in our previous slide and these filtered measurements are done at layer 1 and layer 3 the ss rsrp at layer 1 measurements are useful for the procedures like beam management which required ue2 rapid switch between the beams the 3gb specification 38.133 defines the mapping between the the reported value and the measured value for the layer 1 and layer 3 rsrp as per the 3gbp the minimum rsrp defined for 4g lt was minus 140 dbm but in the later releases this rsrp value was decreased to 156 dbm to cover the coverage performance required by the machine type communication or we can say iot applications the maximum rsrp was defined for lt was 44 dbm which is also increased to minus 31 dbm to consider the beam forming gain at the ue side because in 5g we are expecting that ue will be having more number of antenna ports and that's why they will be able to receive more power in the downlink let's now discuss about layer 1 filter rsrp the rsrp measurement done at layer 1 are filtered to remove the noise impact the rsrp range at layer 1 has a smaller reporting range compared to layer 3 rsrp when a ue is doing or reporting layer 1 ss rsrp if the report quantity within the csi report config is set to ssb index rsrp so why it is sent to ssb index rsrp because 5g has multiple ssps which can be identified by some index and when u is doing the ss rsrp measurement at layer 1 so it will be decoding one of that ssb beam and that's why the layer 1 measurements are known as beam level measurements rather than the cell level measurements which means the ss results is linked to a specific ss or say pbcs block the rsrp value for layer 1 or layer 3 can be represented by 7 bit payload and the mapping is discussed in the further slides at layer 1 ssrsrp or csi rsrp can be represented from values 16 to 130 The 16 represents the measured value as 140 dBm and this 113 represent the measured value of RSRP which is 44 dBm. The layer 3 filtered RSRP measurements are done at layer 3 which is our RRC layer. The layer 3 does filtering similar to layer 1 and this filtering is done to remove the fast fading effect and reduce the short term variations in the measurement results. 
the ss rsrp measurement at layer 3 are useful for the handover procedures or we can say the mobility procedures the maximum value defined for layer 3 rsrp is 31 dbm and the minimum is 156 dbm the full range of this rsrp has 128 entries and these 128 entries can be represented with the 7 bits as we discussed in the previous slide and these 128 entries covers the full range of rsrp starting from minus 31 dbm to minus 156 dbm the layer 3 measurements can be either beam level or it can be cell level and this can be configured by the GNB and these measurements are sent to GNB as part of measurement report. The layer 3 measurements the GNB provides the UE within a SSPBCH clock measurement timing or also known as SMTC. Let's now discuss about the mapping of SSRSRP reported value to the layer 3 or layer 1 SSRSRP measurements. As we discussed in our previous slide, the reported value has total entries of 128 and this 128 values covers the full range of RSRP. The minimum reported value can be 0 and the maximum reported value can be 127. When we see a reported value as 0, it means the layer 3 SSRSRP is greater than minus 156 dBm. We have also discussed in our previous slide that the minimum L1 SSRSRP starts from minus 140 dBm to goes as maximum to minus 144 dBm. So the first 16 values are not applicable for the L1 SSRSRP or CSI RSRP. Those are only applicable to our layer 3 measurements. And if we go the lower part, we can also see the higher values like 125, 126 are also not applicable to the layer 1 RSRP measurements. Those are only related to the layer 3 measurements. Let's take an example and calculate the the reported value to the the measured value. Let's do uh, some simple calculation for calculating the actual RSRP from the reported value. For example, the reported value for RSRP is 15 within a measurement report. And then from this reported value, we need to find out what is the actual RSRP measured by the UE in the DBM. So we have put a very simple formula where we will do a minus of reported value from the maximum value. So we are considering 57 as the maximum values and doing a minus of reported value. 
So from 157, if we do a minus of 15, we get a result of minus 142. And this 142 is a DB result in DBM for the actual RSRP measured value at layer 3. So this can be verified from the reported mapping table. So as we discussed in our previous slide, this table represents the reported value and the measured value. If we go on the 15, so this gives us a result of that RSRP is greater than or equal to sorry less than or equal to minus 142 or greater than minus 141 dpm so our results are minus 142 dpm this is the end of this session hope you like it if you like it please like the video and share with your friends and please subscribe our channel for the further videos on 5G. Thanks for your time. Have a good time.